திருநெல்லை நாராயண ஐயர் சேஷன் பார்ன் அண்ட் பாலக்காட் கேரளா தி அயன் மேன் ஆஃப் இந்தியன் டெமோக்ரஸி அண்ட் நைன்டீன் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் ராமன் மேக்சிஸே அவார்ட் வின்னர் ஃபார் எக்ஸம்பிளரி கவர்மெண்ட் சர்வீஸ் இன் ரெக்கக்னிஷன் வித் இஸ் ரிசல்யூட் ஆக்ஷன்ஸ் டேக்கன் இன் ஆர்டர்லினஸ் ஃபேர்னஸ் அண்ட் இன்டெகிரிட்டி ப்ராட் அண்ட் எலெக்ஷன்ஸ் இன் இண்டியா தி வேர்ல்ட்ஸ் லார்ஜஸ்ட் டெமோக்ரஸி so here is with us session so what do you think in your uh, uh, view as dharmic life dharmic life is the living of a life for one does one's duty but doesn't flinch from doing one's duty but doesn't do the duty in a manner in which you make the profit in any old way you like as quickly as possible so i can make profit by doing something wrong by cheating by uh, writing false accounts or doing my cousin down my brother down no that is not dharmic life so uh, what is the role of the corporate social responsibilities or the dimension of the business you know corporate social responsibility is modern american management junk the best responsibility which a corporate can discharge is to produce the goods or services which it is supposed to be set up in a statement of objects and reasons in the articles of association there would be we shall produce so and so or we shall provide the following service or whatever you have what to say so there are stakeholders which are well understood so a corporate responsibility includes the, but these are not social responsibility as i said do make the goods and service to the best manner to the best technology to the best way available produce it at the best cost that is possible do sales and service properly etc etc look after your workers abide by the law if the law says you can't do this abiding by the law that is not a Uh, a voluntary thing it's a compulsory thing that you must abide by the law if you have done all this there is nothing more called corporate social responsibility today cheating companies go about saying i have taught children i have run this school i have run something else all of that is rubbish you make your profit you make your taxes you pay your shareholders their return on the share you look after your workers you produce the goods and services you are supposed to look after serve them properly don't spoil the environment you have done your responsibility so the other thing is having cheated any number of big american company names but done all kinds of cheating i don't want to mention them by name and then said we are doing so corporate social responsibility unadulterated junk corporate social responsibility is unalloyed junk the dimensions of uh, the business ethics in the current scenario and uh, particularly with an example like satyam what has happened in the recent past on uh, um, the proposal to take over the maitas infrastructure and uh, a few other thing what do, what is your no, no i refuse to comment on current events economic events at all what i i don't have in my hand what uh, appeared in the newspapers i don't trust so on based on that i am not going to give you any comment on satyam or maitas or whatever it is but ethics is ethics whether it is uh, whether it is satyam or asatyam ethics is ethics so what was done was not ethical it was wrong what was done was ethical right now uh, whoever did something had to be more careful if the man at the other end was your own son or son in law or somebody so what is required or needed in our country to succeed globally our politics is even more complex our people are timid by nature our best technical people learn the technology but they won't apply it i once went to an american company and asked them they said your boys are very good but i tell them go answer the door they will go and open the door and say i have answered the door now what do i do they don't even ask the fellow on the other side what do you want whom do you want to meet so he said initiative that the average indian is utterly lacking in initiative average indian i am not talking the best indians they are of course different uh, what do you think can make our uh, strengthen our nation as uh, uh, our country and uh, the developed i don't think there is a second answer except hard work 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 if you ask me 100 times i'll give you one word work and the work ethic in this country is not bad it is rotten everybody tries to avoid work if he can and find an excuse uh, i got a traffic jam why yeah, are you you promised to come at 10 o'clock why have you come at 10:15 traffic jam as if you didn't expect a traffic jam in madras for god's sake on sunday it is worse it's not better so that is what it is the work ethic find a reason some reason so and so died therefore holiday 
For God's sake, let him die, let him go in peace. Why have a holiday? I don't understand. So, find an excuse for non-working. Find an excuse for people in this country to not abide by what they promise. And the largest use of words in India is I am Zari. The most common word used in India is I am Zari. What do you think is the challenge or the developmental need in education, sir? No, no, no. I, you are opening up a can of worms. Education is a whole new ball game. You see, the Indian education system was devised by Macaulay in order to destroy Indian culture. There is a famous minute he has written, I don't remember it verbatim. He said, if you want to conquer India, we must destroy the education system. So, he introduced the education system, which is what is available today with minor changes between 47 and today. The education system has been tampered with here and there a little bit, but nothing substantial. Our education system is not bad because our boys and girls, when they go abroad, perform extremely well. Uh, they go to the United States, they go to England, or they perform very well, whether they go to IBM, whether they go to Intel, whether they go to Microsoft, wherever they go, they are performing very well. It is only on the technology uh, front? No. Or? Doctors. What else? What other front have they gone? Tell me. Any front where they have gone abroad, they have done well. Mm -hmm. But Why they couldn't excel in India? Because atmosphere of excellence is not there. Excellence as a, they will say, what will I get? Please work excellently. They will say, what will I get? That excellence is its own reward is something which is not understood here. Uh, do you think uh, the uh, women, uh, currently the, in the rural India, around 45% of the women population are working, are income earners. And uh, in the, at least in the urban societies, most of the metro and uh, the urban societies, around 21 to 27% of women are working. And uh, do you think economic uh, uh, upliftment of the women? Certainly. In addition to education, the most important thing which will raise the quality or the or the or the or the status of women is the ability to economically be able to stand on his or on her own legs, undoubtedly. So, uh, what do you think are our current major economic challenges and uh, socio-economic challenges which we are facing, and uh, how do we need to tackle? So, I think there are two separate kinds of things, and then you read the two together. One is the economic challenges. Before the global meltdown started, a few months back, and global recession took place and everybody ran for cover, we had our own economic challenges to grow at, so that as the finance minister, the prime minister had promised, we would get 8% growth or 9% growth. That was a challenge in itself to do, a sustained and per every year growth of 8 or 9% in a democracy. I am not saying this in order to belittle what China has done, but China had the advantage that its polity was a controlled polity. They could save whatever they wanted to save. In a democracy, you can't save as hard as, but even then our savings rates have gone up very steeply. So we progressed, so one economic challenge was to sustain the 8%. Meanwhile, the meltdown has taken place and however much we may wish, we are not fully insulated. We are insulated sub somewhat, but we are not fully insulated. So, the economic challenge at the moment is A, to meet the meltdown and B, to go back to sustained growth of 8 or 9 percent or whatever is the percentage. On the social development challenge? On the social development side, the challenges are extremely widely varied. The educational challenge, the health challenge. The population challenge, I do not think our increasing population is a great problem. We can manage with this and more population, because our population is our asset. But we must not have people born who are not required. The What my old master used to say, improvident maternity. Women should not be made machines for producing babies. So, population, health and and the most important challenge in the social sector is the attempt at producing a cohesive integrated society. Integration does not mean that you are a Muslim, I compel you to come and worship in the temple, I am a Hindu, you compel me to go and worship in the mosque. But a society, the only living example in the whole world of a multicultural, multilingual, multi-religious society is India. 
So, convert this into a cohesive society by all the integrating factors which are many. The national electrical grid is an integrating factor. The national milk grid is an integrating factor. The national cashew nut uh, grid is an integrating factor. The national wheat grid is an integrating factor. The national travel, national tourism is an integrating factor. To support the good, to oppose the negative, usually there are enough people found to support the negative rather than the positive. So, that is the largest social challenge is to convert this into a cohesive integrated society and live as we lived for hundreds of years Hindu, Christian, Muslim for every sort to see. That is so. The excellence, as uh, you said that uh, most Anybody where you see excellence, give it approbation. Where you see the non-availability of excellence, criticize it, damn it, kill it. That's it. So, uh, what do you think uh, we should do in order to uplift our masses? Nothing. Everybody does his or her own work excellently. Everybody sticks to the fundamental virtues of dharma. If those two things are done, dharma plus excellence, is equal to nirvana.